All right, thank you everyone for your patience. Uh, for those of you guys who've just come in, uh, welcome to today's US NCO workshop. I'm uh, glad that you're here. And I'm excited to talk to you guys about the National Chemistry Olympiad. Uh, today we'll be going over not only the competition, but also some of the things about what you should expect, and also yeah. some of the preparation materials that you would want to have. Uh, throughout the presentation, if you guys could keep your mics muted, uh, that'd be best for all of us. So uh, thank you for that. All right. Uh, without further ado, let's get started. So uh, the, these workshops about the Olympiads are part of a series uh, for chemistry. This is our second workshop here. Our physics workshop was a few days ago. And uh, in total, we have eight. So okay, if I, any I, of these, I'm sorry. If you guys could keep your mics uh, muted during the presentation, that'd be great. Any questions that you guys may have can go in the chat and I'll answer them accordingly over the course of the presentation. So as I was saying, uh, these Olympiad workshops are part of a series. Uh, chemistry is the second of our series. And if any of these topics are interesting to you, feel free to register. And uh, uh, thank you for that. So uh, let's go on to the chemistry. All right, first things first. You want to know how to log into the website, the USNCO website. So USNCO is uh, affiliated with ACS or the American Chemical Society. Uh, they're a great organization to have a bunch of resources and activities for a variety of students from high school to undergraduate and beyond. So uh, a great resource. So you want to go to uh, www.acs.org. I'm going to click on this link right here. Load it up. You want to go through the different steps to reach the US NCO website. So first you want to highlight to this students and educators tab. Down here you have four students. Click on that. Scroll down a little bit. Here we have Chemistry Olympiad and this is where you'll find all the resources you need. So you'll have rules, some uh, coordinators, mentors, other things like that, and also exams, which is a very important point that we'll be discussing later on. All the information is here. There's important dates here. This is for 2021, but it will be updated uh, shortly for the 2022 competition and going forward like that. All right. So that's for the website. And now let's talk about the various levels to the US NCO competition. So uh, with the US NCO, we start out with the local round, the local exam. So that's going to be uh, on the school basis. So uh, you are going to be taking the US NCO local round within your school and with your peers from your school. So uh, with this, uh, usually it should be either a high school that's providing it or uh, potentially an outside institution such as like a local academy. Um, I know that there are several academies around NJ and probably in other areas that have this kind of competition and that they're sponsoring this competition. They're running it for students to be able to register. So that's if your school is unable to provide uh, the contest. In the case that your school is not already providing the USNCO local exam for you to take, you can always suggest it to perhaps a science supervisor at your high school or something like that. And perhaps you can get it arranged. I know for the high school that I go to, Montgomery High School, there is a Montgomery STEM board that is that runs all the registration for the US NCO local exam. So there might be a similar kind of organization in your school. You would want to reach out to them to get to know any dates that you want to make and any registration steps that you want to take. So with that, then you're registered for the local round. And the local round is essentially a 60 question multiple choice test. You have one hour and 50 minutes uh, to answer 60 multiple choice ABCD uh, chemistry questions. It's a pretty high level test. Um, and for the cutoff, or essentially the score you want to get above in order to move to the next level, that's going to be around a 45. Typically, you want to secure around a 50 out of 60 in order to be able to pass to that next round. So in addition to the cutoff score, there's also a policy where uh, at any single institution, for example, your school, uh, only the top two students are able to make it. So say, for example, your school is very strong in chemistry and three students are able to make it above the cutoff score, but only the top two are going to pass. So it depends on your school, but you may also uh, have to take that into consideration during your preparation uh, to get into that top two of your school in order to be able to pass to the 
a national round. So once you're able to pass the top two cutoff and the actual cutoff score, then you're going to be moving to the national round. So with the national round, with the national round, you'll be competing with around the top 1,000 of the nation, one top 1,000 high school students of the nation. So that's very exciting for you. And in normal years, this competition will then involve around four plus hours of testing. Uh, there's a multiple choice section, 16 questions as usual, as well as an FRQ uh, section, which is around eight questions and a lap section, which is two questions. Uh, so for this time, the 60 question multiple choice section is going to be only one hour, 30 minutes. The free response will be one hour, 45, and the lab will also be one hour, 30, just like the multiple choice. This con this uh, national round is going to be at a higher level uh, compared to the local round, and every everyone's going to be very well prepared. So it's pretty intense competition once you reach this round. And of those 1,000 competing in the nation, usually they rank uh, the top 150, which will receive the honors merit. And then there's the top 50 that receive the high honors merit. And then the, <clears throat> sorry. And then there's the top 20, which will make it to the next round with the training camp and the international chemistry Olympiad, so ICO. All right. And with this final level, the training camp in ICO, now you're talking about the top 20 students in the nation in chemistry. So this is truly the best of the best in the nation. So you're going to be learning advanced topics for around two to three weeks with uh, professional mentors. Uh, these are top notch skills about chemistry that you'll be covering. And then you'll go to compete in the International Chemistry Olympia, which is usually hosted in a different country. Um, I remember in recent years, there's been Iran, Tokyo, uh, Japan, of course, and Portugal. So all across the nation, very exciting. You're traveling to represent your nation. It's an amazing achievement. All right. I just remember that I forgot to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sean Liu, and I'm currently a rising senior in Montgomery High School. Uh, this past year, I was able to achieve high honors uh, status, so top 50 in the US NCO. Uh, and last year, I was able to achieve honor status. So that's a little bit about me and my background. Anyway, let's go on to topics. So these, this is the variety of topics that will be covered in each of these rounds. Starting from local round, you'll be seeing a uh, majority of these topics, if not all of these topics. So we're looking at stoichiometry and solutions. Uh, there's laboratory equipment and descriptive chemistry. There's states of matter, thermodynamics. The list goes on. Uh, with analytics, I put a star there because usually they don't cover too uh, much analytics in depth on the local and the national round. It's more of a concept that's more heavily focused on in the International Chemistry Olympiad. So with analytics, this is like, say you have a certain compound and you want to make it into another compound, list the steps in between, what kinds of reactions you, will you need, which kind of conditions will you need. Uh, so that is the analytical chemistry. And that's usually uh, focused on mostly in ICO and on a surface level in the local round and the national round. There's also spectroscopy. Uh, which is more lab equipment based. That's also going to be focused more on the ICO, the International Chemistry Olympiad, and less so on the lower uh, rounds. Right here, we have an example of states of matter. This is a solid lattice structure uh, where X, Y, Z are different atoms. This might be something you'll encounter during the local round or the national round or the international round. Here we have a voltaic cell. Here we have a single uh, a substitution, aromatic substitution. So a wide variety of topics, all uh, related to chemistry, the central science and how molecules interact with each other. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that on this list, you might not, you might notice that there's no uh, acids and bases or things like that. Uh, don't let that fool you. Acids and bases are definitely on the test. They're more covered in the connects and equilibrium section. So if that's what you're wondering, that's where acids and bases is. Same with solutions. There's a bit of solutions over here, but then we'll go into more depth about solutions during the test. So uh, watch out for that. Uh, here's the quick topic distribution. So uh, this is the approximate uh, order in which you'll encounter the variety of topics that is covered on the Chemistry Olympiad. This is for local and national rounds only. With the international round, 
uh, the structure is uh, different and the competition in general is uh, more expansive. So this particular topic distribution doesn't really apply there, but um, that's, this uh, topic distribution is pretty important for local and national rounds. Anyway, let's take a quick look at some sample questions. So uh, this is for local round. You might notice that with this first question here, question 10, uh, the pattern here is that you have uh, which of the following so-and-so is suitable for so-and-so. And you'll have option one and two, and you'll have to determine whether it's one only, two only, or both one and two, or neither one and two. Uh, that's a common pattern throughout local and national rounds where you'll have this kind of structure of question. So maybe you know one fact about number one, but you don't know what number two is. It's the question is going to be equally difficult. Uh, so there's that element to it. Same thing down here with question 56. Uh, and this is a, a general connects question. So this is how they would format some of their uh, ideas and some of their answers. All right. Here we have examples of national round multiple choice questions, very similar, honestly, in terms of structure. Uh, here is how they represent their charts. Of course, you'll be probably doing this on the computer screen a little bit larger, so that's not a worry if you can't read that. Uh, here is how they represent their molecules, uh, some of their charts, things like that. This is the general structure of question that you'll be seeing. Uh, generally pretty well formatted. Everything's pretty clear, so usually, that's not a problem, uh, as long as you know how to read your equations and all that, know how to read your graphs. This is the general format of the sample free response. This particular example has five parts. Uh, they can go up to eight parts or 10 parts with these questions, depending on what kind of question you have. You have eight of these and a one hour 45 to solve these. Um, they generally go into pretty significant depth with the free response, uh, more so than the multiple choice. They have the time to really develop a question and dive deep into a certain concept. Here, we're looking at a bit of bonding and a bit of uh, molecular structures, things like that. And also, I think some reactions with uh, part E. So a lot of things going into these questions. Uh, this particular question is uh, quite advanced, involving some uh, some abnormal chemistry, I'd say, especially with the boron. So uh, the, this competition definitely goes into a lot of depth. And uh, let's look at how to best prepare. Before that, uh, here's the sample lab question. Uh, one thing I want to note is that in the recent two years due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the lab section for the national round has been canceled. Uh, and I expect that uh, in coming years though, the lab section will definitely return now that uh, the situation is coming down with the COVID-19 pandemic. All right, so this is an example lab question, generally pretty short, except that each of these parts is quite time consuming. You're gonna be given uh, hands-on equipment. Uh, you're gonna be given the chemicals, the beakers, uh, the pipettes, all of that stuff. And you're gonna be setting up your own experiment, uh, describing your experimental plan, collecting data, doing the calculations, all of that to solve their question, their problem that they're posing to you. Remember, there's two of these in one hour, 30 minutes. All right, I'm gonna take a quick breather and wait for a few seconds to ask if there are any questions so far. Let me just check the chat real quick. All right, so I have a question about um, uh, whether we proctor this Olympiad. So um, with our organization, uh, since we started uh, recently, the organization is not something we're affiliated with, uh, ACS and USNCO, but um, if you were to reach out to your school, uh, likely maybe uh, a high school that is nearby, uh, you might be able to ask around and figure out how you can uh, take this test. Um, in terms of specific schools, such as Princeton High School or Princeton Middle School, I can't really answer to that. Um, I, I'm, I'm not learning there, so I'm not very sure of the specifics, um, but uh, I'm sure that if you reach out to perhaps the science supervisor at Princeton High School or whatever high school you're at, uh, you can figure out the specifics there. 
All right, any other questions? All right, we're good. So moving on, uh, now we're going to tips and uh, tricks and materials and all of that stuff. So if there's one uh, core advice that I have to give, it's that you have to prepare early. And when I'm talking about early, I'm talking about October. This, uh, the local round is going to be in March, uh, on average around March, usually early March. And then if you make the national round, that will be in around early, either early May or late April. Probably late April is your best bet. So when you're taking the test in March and once you find your results out in say late March, and then you wanna start preparing for the national round, you got one month and that's not really gonna be enough time for you. So when, it, when I say early preparation, I also mean that you also have to start preparing for the national round early if that's what you're expecting to go for. If this is something big that you want to succeed in, then national round preparation before the local round is pretty much essential. And I mentioned that day, October. Uh, that's usually around when I begin my preparation. Of course, I remember some stuff from the previous years, but uh, I do have to prepare pretty intensely for several months uh, before the local round and the national round. Uh, and that provides not only the knowledge that you might need, but also a sense of security for yourself and also a sense of familiarity with the test. So uh, you're not going to go in there feeling uh, a sense of impending doom or anything like that. This is not a cram worthy competition. There are a wide variety of topics. If you pick up that textbook, because we're going to talk about textbooks in a little bit, but if you pick up your textbook for this test, it's going to be massive not a week's worth of reading, not a month's worth of reading realistically. So definitely want to take your time in preparing and make sure you understand all those different concepts. Just got a question in the chat. Let me address that real quick. All right. So in 2021, why were there two parts to the national exam? Actually, there are three parts to the national exam in typical years. So uh, we're talking about the multiple choice section, the free response section, and the lab section, uh, there were actually two parts in the most recent uh, competition, 2021, as well as 2020. And those two parts, instead of being taken together, they were separated. So in normal years, you're gonna, if you make the uh, national round, you'll be taking all three parts in uh, one day. So one sitting, uh, of course you'll have breaks in between, but it's gonna be one day, all three parts, that's it. All 1,000 students will take all three parts. And then from there, we have the uh, top 150, 50, and 20. Uh, in the last two years, it's been a little bit different due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, what happened is, is that we had the first part um, of the national round, so the multiple choice part, we took that first. And from those scores, the, uh, the ACS officials then determined the top 200 students and uh, brought those 200 students to the second part uh, with the free response. And then from the free response scores plus the multiple choice scores, the ACS then officials then determined the top 150, 50, and 20. There was no lab section because we had a socially distance and all of that. So uh, it was quite a bit different for during the pandemic, uh, but I expect next year you can uh, generally uh, look forward to a full competition with the lab section, everything in one sitting as it was in previous years. All right, any other questions? All right, we're good. So here's the elements of preparation. Now let's talk about textbooks because the textbook is gonna be a very key resource in your studying. Uh, it's going to be what, what you consult for information on every specific topic. It's going to be a source of knowledge, essentially. And just how just like how textbooks are important in studying for a school class, uh, same same applies here. So uh, one textbook that I suggest is called Holt Modern Chemistry. That's H-O-L-T, Holt Modern Chemistry. Uh, that's a pretty good textbook especially if you're learning chemistry new, perhaps you just registered for your AP chemistry class and you haven't really gone into much depth with chemistry apart from uh, maybe a quick reading of some kind. Well, whole modern chemistry is where you're going to want to start. 
Uh, there are other textbooks out there that people will suggest, Zoomdal, Klein, a bunch of different names. Um, I'm not sure of the merits of other textbooks. Holt is one that I can attest to in being very useful. All right. And with practice, uh, you might have noticed that on the website when we took a look at that, there was a tab called exams. And if you scroll down from that tab, you're going to uh, find a bunch of previous years exams. So 2021, 2020, all the way until like 1999. There's a lot of tests there. And as I say on the slide here, you got to use those tests well, because doing those practice is the only way you'll really get used to the nature of the US NCO test. This is not going to be your regular school test. And uh, there's a very specific style to this test. And it's only by taking these practice papers that you'll really uh, feel the rhythm of that test. So uh, in previous years, over the course of the last two years, I've taken every single test that was on the website. And I really do think it helps. So uh, this comes back to the early preparation element, uh, starting in October or some early year, like your test is in March, but you really do want to start in the year prior. And uh, because there's so many tests and resources for you to use, uh, the early preparation is pretty essential. So those two kind of work in conjunction. Uh, here I mentioned that you might want to be taking AP Chemistry, if possible, before you take the test. Perhaps you already took AP Chemistry, that's amazing, that's going to help. Uh, if you haven't taken AP Chemistry yet, and you want to take the test in a certain school year, you might want to consider registering for AP Chemistry, if possible, if you have space in your schedule. If not, it is very possible that you're able to prepare well enough on your own. It's just going to be a more difficult upward trek. There's motivation factors and all of that playing in. And that's why I usually suggest uh, to have AP chemistry uh, under your tool belt while you're taking, uh, while you're preparing for this test. Uh, the first year that I took the competition, I was learning AP chemistry in conjunction. Um, but I was also studying outside of the class. So usually I'd be several chapters ahead of the class, at least. Um, sometimes I think it was, I think it was halfway through the class, I already covered all the topics in AP chemistry and beyond. So even if you're learning AP chemistry, that's not a reason to rest on your laurels. You do want to be ahead of your class because the test is in March, right? And AP, AP is usually finished up in late May. So at the rate of your class preparation, you're not even going to be able to cover all the topics in time. So AP chemistry is a good motivating factor, but you do also want to remain ahead of the curve. All right, just got a question in the chat. Let me go address that real quick. Uh, can someone please share the recommended textbook? Oh, yeah, I can do that real quick. I'll type the name in the chat. Uh, the textbook that I suggested was called Holt Modern Chemistry. I know a lot of schools, a lot of high schools, use this specific textbook for their uh, AP classes. So for AP Chemistry, uh, teachers would actually provide this textbook to their students. So it might be the case that your teachers actually have this textbook at school. And as long as you reach out, you'll be able to access, <clears throat> sorry, access a copy of this textbook. All right, someone just asked me what are the websites? So let me type that, uh, let me type that into the chat real quick. ACS.org is where you want to start out. ACS referring to American Chemical Society. They're the parent organization of USNCO. Uh, once you click into there, you'll want to navigate the website a little bit. So you want to go to st for students and then scroll down to uh, the Chemistry Olympiad. Um, and there you'll find all the information you need, any resources, all that stuff. All right, final element to preparation is the materials. Um, one of the key materials I show on the screen right here is the calculator. So for the US NCO competitions for local, national and international round, you will not be allowed a graphing calculator. Any calculator with graphing functions will not be allowed. And most schools and most students will get a graphing calculator for their regular math classes and things like that. And this is why I'm warning you guys that calculator will not work for the test. You won't be allowed to bring that into the room. So this calculator I show right here is the TI-36X Pro. It's the one that I uh, specifically got 
uh, while preparing for the competition. It's a very good calculator and it's got plenty of functionality despite not having the graphing function. So it fits the bill very well for the USNCO. Uh, let me check this question in the chat real quick. When did you start having interest in chemistry? Long ago. Uh, I can't pin a specific time, maybe around third grade, fourth grade. And when I'm saying interest in chemistry, I'm just mean like an actual just interest, you know, um, looking at uh, elements in around my house, in nature, things like that, and just being curious, you know. Uh, if we're talking about preparation, um, maybe around ninth grade, high school, ninth grade, tenth grade, that area. Um, so for reference, maybe around eighth grade, I knew what an isotope was. So like kind of basic chemistry knowledge, like maybe a foundational kind of chemistry knowledge, uh, real uh, preparation for a high level knowledge really came during high school. So uh, say you're sixth grade right now, and you want to prepare for this competition. Well, uh, that's good for you because you got plenty of years left uh, to take your time and gauging your interest and also uh, doing your own I don't know what preparation you'd be doing at uh, sixth grade, but um, you got time is what I is what I mean. Uh, so if you're currently in high school and you're looking to take this competition, uh, any time is a good time to start preparing. All right. So in addition to your calculator, of course, you need your regular pencil for the local round. Uh, at least at Montgomery High School, which I think is a pretty typical kind of uh, US NCO administrating area. Um, you are going to need to bring a computer because the uh, local round is going to be online. In normal years, you would uh, travel to a location such as uh, a college or a university for the national round. And there they will provide you paper and pencil tests for the national round. So for the national round, uh, the computer element is not necessary. But for local round, uh, most likely uh, nine times out of 10, you will need a computer of your own that can connect to Wi-Fi and be fast, you know, uh, just be a functional computer to take the test on. The specific website that uh, ACS uses is called QuizCase. Um, it's just any other kind of testing uh, website, uh, nothing too special. It's just what ACS uh, uses for administering the test. So there's that. All right, I'm just uh, looking through questions in the chat. Is the calculator TI-36X Pro allowed in the test? Yes, this calculator does fit the bill in the test. And I've got to say it's one of the best calculators to use on the test because of its wide range of functionality uh, while still meeting the, the requirements of not being a graphing calculator. Which grade do you recommend to take the test? Also, do you need to do it after chemistry AP? Okay, so uh, for grade level, I'd say any time during high school is pretty good. Ninth grade is uh, a little bit earlier, so it might be uh, difficult to uh, really get motivated for taking the test, but um, it's viable, I think. Um, tenth grade is, I think, the golden hour to start uh, preparing for and looking at this test. Um, that's when most students take AP Chemistry, so that's probably when they're feeling most prepared. In ninth grade, you might not be able to take AP Chemistry, so that might be a bit of a hindrance during your preparation. Um, whether you need to take it before or after AP Chemistry really depends on the student. I usually think, I'd usually suggest that um, the first year you take it should likely be the year that you start AP Chemistry. So during the during your preparation, you'll be taking the AP Chemistry class. So uh, it, it gives a bit of a motivating factor as well as the knowledge you would need. All right, I'll take a breather real quick. Uh, wait for a few seconds. Any questions? Feel free to add them into the chat. Um, excuse me. Go ahead. I have a question. So, um, what age did you um, start having an interest in chemistry? That's a difficult question. Um, I don't remember the younger years very well, but maybe. Yeah, so um, um, I have a. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. I have a little chemistry lab. Hmm? I have a little chemistry lab in, this, in my room. That's amazing. I wish I had one of those when I was young. Yeah. That's I'm good stuff. To, I'm trying to use, I'm trying to get the metal out of um, well, some rocks. That's amazing. Uh, good luck on that. Yeah. Um, 
early interest in chemistry is uh, very good. Um, I think that uh, usually um, it, it might, for some people, uh, early interest is a second nature. For others, uh, developing an interest in science takes a bit of time and some grade levels and some some years, you know. So uh, for for all individuals, whether it's an early interest or later uh, fostering interest, I think uh, taking the US NCO is uh, a, a highly viable option. So uh, that's not like any kind of um, I think USNCO is suitable for anyone who's interested in chemistry around the time they reach high school. So that's my opinion you know, on that. All right, a few more questions in the chat. Give me one second. Uh, which grade did you take AP Chemistry in my high school? I took it in 10th grade. Um, where would we be able to access the recording? That's a good question. Um, since this is uh, this workshop is in a series uh, for Logistem Foundation, it will be on our YouTube channel uh, at Logistem. Uh, this is all being recorded and it'll be posted there for you guys to look over and for anyone who missed uh, today's uh, workshop they'll be able to see that there as well all right how do you study and prepare uh good good thing that you asked because i was going to go into that uh just right now uh first a little chemistry joke for anyone who understands uh uh dying uh, we that's a specific compound i'm gonna move oh, on I get, I get it all right, someone gets it. Anyway, study tips and suggestions. Uh, first thing is you got to use your practice test. The ones I mentioned on the website, very, very helpful. Definitely want to take a look at those uh, because those are from past years. And uh, from my experience, if you go from 1999 uh, to say 2021, uh, over time, the test actually gets in general a little more difficult. And that's because uh, over time, people have more resources to prepare. The test gets more popular, things like that. Competition in general, a little more uh, tight. So then in response, the test makers, of course, make the test uh, incrementally harder over the years. So I still suggest start from 1999, uh, depending on how much time you have, of course. Uh, but uh, do as many practice tests as you can, because that's where you get that familiarity aspect. You don't want to be surprised when you walk in on test day and uh, something about the format is what throws you off, right? That, that never feels good. So use the practice test. It's easy to find them online. It's all day for you. Uh, befriend Google is uh, my colloquial way of saying, if you need to search something up, feel free to do that and do that right away because there will be things that you need to search up. You're going to run into a question, say, uh, what is the flame test color for potassium? And maybe your textbook didn't go over that specifically, or you can't think of that uh, just off your mind. So then uh, right then and there, search it up on Google, figure out, oh, potassium color is so-and-so. Um, and then from there, you might actually even be able to find, oh, I found a chart of metal flame test colors. There you have a knowledge that will actually help you in future years, in future practice, and maybe even on the test. So uh, searching up things on Google, it's perfectly fine and definitely a viable strategy and an important part of my strategy in studying. All right, question in the chat. Let me check this out. Um, did you get any help from your parents or relatives? Uh, so both of my parents are involved in the tech industry uh, and not so much related to chemistry. That just, I think, further emphasizes that you don't need to be uh, born to a chemistry professor and someone at Leon de Basel in order to uh, be good at this competition and be able to prepare effectively for this competition. Uh, this really is accessible to any and all students who want to take it. Um, my brother also competed in this competition and he also was able to achieve high honors top 50. So I guess that was probably a helping factor. Uh, in the year that we took it, took the test together, uh, we did help each other prepare. Um, but it's not essential to have your older brother taking the test as well. You definitely can prepare on your own. All the resources are there online for you. The exams, Google, uh, that's all there for you. So I don't think there's any real particular um resource that other than the norm that uh that really like made some kind of massive boost to my studying um and then there's uh for this last 
aspect on this slide, truly understand. This is definitely an important aspect. You don't want to feel like you're dying on the test, right? Because it will be very easy to read through the basics. So like chemical nomenclature or something, read through it and be like, oh yeah, it's just so-and-so and just have a surface understanding of it. Uh, gloss over it, memorize it, something like that. That is just going to hinder your later progress. So this is especially true with organic chemistry where every concept builds on the next. So you got to know your uh, basic nomenclature before you can know your radical substitutions. You got to know your radical substitutions before you can learn about your aromatic substitutions. Everything builds on the next. And if you uh, misstep early on, you want to make sure that you really understand uh, any kinds of any difficult concepts early on so that later on becomes uh, easier for you. All right, any questions on study tips or suggestions? Because um, as a, a several time test taker and also as a high honors finalist, um, I have a bit of experience that I'm willing to share with you guys. So any questions, uh, feel free to type them in the chat. All right, I think we're good. So let's keep on going. Uh, here's a promotional poster for US National Chemistry Olympiad. Um, this is uh, one of my final slides. Just to summarize the test a little bit, um, for the US National Chemistry Olympiad, I think really it's a, it's, a, it's a test that not only should be treated like some kind of competition or glory or anything like that, because it really helps you pursue an interest in chemistry. And I'd say anyone who just has like a foundational interest in chemistry, or maybe someone who really uh, is like dead set on pursuing it in the future, uh, for anyone and everyone interested in the central science, I think US National Chemistry Olympiad is the test for you. So uh, definitely check it out, check out the resources and uh, check out our other workshops for Logistem. We have uh, six more after this one, another one of which I am also hosting, uh, the biology workshop, so USABO, um, if any of you guys are registered for that. And uh, definitely check out our website, logistem.club. All right, uh, any final questions? Uh, after this section, I'll be going to a bit of uh, problem solving just to demonstrate uh, what you might see on the test. Uh, I just got a question in the chat. Give me one sec. Never mind. That is Gracelyn sending us the website. Thank you, Gracelyn. Uh, any questions? All right. Hold up one sec. So. How did you practice your presentation skills? Um, not related to chemistry, but uh, I can talk a little bit about that. Um, I honestly did not practice. I know there's plenty of debate clubs and public speaking clubs and things like that. Uh, I never went to any of those. So um, I am the I am captain of my high school of science Olympia. So there's a bit of speaking with that, I guess. Uh, but no, never really practiced. I guess it's something I developed over time, uh, this particular speaking style. I don't know if it's anything special, but there's that. Um, uh, quick question. Yep. Do you have Go a ahead. chemistry lab in your um, house? I do in the garage. Nice. Yeah. All right. How did you practice? Oh, no, that's the, other, that's the previous question. My bad. What major are you planning to take? Uh, chemistry, believe it or not. Um, at least that's the current plan. Uh, chemistry, maybe organic chemistry or biochemistry, somewhere in that chemistry biology field. Um, let's see, is there a math requirement? Uh, not, not technically, but I say maybe you, you would probably want around like an either an algebra one or algebra two level. So you want to be able to do quadratic equations like that. Like quadratic equations should be simple. Um, systems of equations should be fast uh, because with chemistry, there's actually quite a bit of math. So um, for example, you got two reactions doing so-and-so with kinetics, uh, you're gonna have 
pretty big quadratic equations. Um, in addition to that, you might want to know some graphing. There's going to be uh, logarithms and things like that that you'll have also be able to read and be able to determine values from. So I think probably by around eighth, ninth grade, that you should definitely have the math necessary um, on a normal track. Yeah, I think that should be around it. Um, so yeah, there's that. Does preparing for the exam affect your other subjects? Um, it affects my studying skills, my preparation skills, and my test taking skills. So in that sense, yes, it would. Uh, I'll mute real quick. Uh, if you guys could keep your mics muted, unless you're asking a question, uh, that'd be great. Um, does it take too much time? It takes a lot of time to prepare for this test, indeed. Um, by the time you reach around February and March, if you really do want to do well, you'll be spending several hours on this test preparing uh, on average, probably. Uh, that's part of the rigor for this test. Um, how did you balance this in other school assignments? Um, I did. Uh, I, I don't know. I, because with my school assignments, never took the full day or anything. I definitely had enough time with both. I also play two instruments, cello and piano. So I was also balancing those, uh, those time commitments as well. And I never really felt like there was any rush, um, plenty of time during the day. Uh, definitely you want to be efficient. You want to be able to prioritize your time, maybe schedule out, uh, an hour or something and say, I finished so-and-so homework during this time. The rest of the time will be for chemistry, something like that. And you have to hold yourself accountable to that. And I think, you know, overall, it's not like the, the USNCO is going to take up all your time or anything like that. Uh, what events do you do in Science Olympiad? Okay, so Science Olympiad and Chemistry Olympiad are a little bit different. Um, for anyone who's unsure about that, Science Olympiad is a whole nother kind of team-based competition. Um, and then there's also uh, Science Olympiads, such as Chemistry Olympiad, Physics Olympiad, Biology Olympiad, Computing Olympiad, things like that. Uh, Science Olympiad is more of like a high school team-based uh, competition. For that, I do Chemistry Lab and Sounds of Music and write stuff. Uh, not really related though, um, but for anyone who's curious. Do you do math and physics competitions as well? I do do AMC. Um, I am a two-time AME qualifier. I don't think that's, a, that's like being uh, an Amy qualifier doesn't really say much about how you'll do in this competition. Like, yes, you do need math, but not like that kind of competition math. So yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. I did take uh, the F equal MA once and did not do well and never tried again. So physics, not necessary. Maybe you can do that as well. Pursue US AFO and US NCO at the same time. I know many people who do do that, um, but it's not a requirement of any kind. All right, how do you use your time wisely when preparing and for schoolwork? I kind of answered this earlier. Mainly it's prime, uh, sorry, not prime, time management and also just holding yourself accountable to whatever schedule you set for yourself. Make sure that, just remember that when you finish everything you need to finish, that's the mo that's, that's gonna be satisfying at the end of the day when you go to sleep and you're like, I did everything I needed to do. I don't know, that's what motivates me. Uh, Science Olympiad a bit. Uh, does learning chemistry, is it more memory or logic? Both by quite a bit. I say in quite an equal balance of both. Uh, for, for example, with flame tests, you're going to need to memorize a bit, but there are going to be times where you don't memorize and you still can solve using logic and reasoning and things like that. And a lot of it's going to be pattern recognition, recognizing a pattern between, oh, there's so-and-so trend between elements, for example like say electronegativity, there's a trend toward the FON side of the periodic table upper right, but there's plenty of exceptions here, there, here, there, recognizing the pattern in the exceptions. And maybe there's even exceptions to exceptions. That's pretty common in USNCO. This is where preparation is essential. Uh, your textbook might not even go over these details. So with that, you, maybe you learn that from intuition with pr taking practice tests. Maybe you're able to find that online strike gold like that. Uh, there's plenty of ways that you guys can study. You'll have to find your own method. Uh, do things interfere when preparing? Not if I block out the time. If I say, I'm gonna sit down for two hours, take the test, 
uh, check my answers, review in depth. Maybe it takes more than two hours. Well, you got to hold yourself accountable, figure out what schedule works for you. Uh, do you have time to play computer games? Um, well, I do relax in my own met in my own ways. Uh, I definitely have my own free time. So uh, I don't want any of you guys cutting out your free time because of USNCO. I think it's definitely possible to balance some free time and balance uh, doing well in this competition. All right, how are you able to avoid procrastination? Oh man, these questions really hitting, really hitting home, huh? Uh, procrastination is a problem for everyone, including myself. So procrastination, I think, I think this thing I said earlier is the best way. So uh, really uh, persevering, maybe you do need to take a, a minute break, stand up, stretch, and you really are tired. That's definitely very normal. Um, and I would do that for sure. But just remembering that uh, at the end of the day, when you finished everything, that's the most satisfying feeling. That's, I th I'd say that's enough to get me to uh, get moving. All right, a lot of questions, not all related to Chemistry Olympiad, but that's okay. Uh, any other questions? I think we're good. So let's go on to my questions. Uh, we're going to do some sample problem solving. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show a set of three questions and I'll wait for about a minute. So that's not going to be enough time for you to solve every question, even if you're at uh, a very uh, well rehearsed, uh, well studied level. Um, but this is really to get some of you guys to think, because I know some of you guys are still in middle school and things like that. So honestly, I'd be very impressed if you guys can solve uh, one or two of these. So this is more to get you guys to look at the question, be able to read it yourself and think about it some uh, before we talk about it. All right, here's a set of three questions. What time do you normally go to sleep? Oh man, these questions. Uh, very interesting. Um, currently around 11. I'd say that's a pretty good day. 11 is fine with me. Wake up at maybe 7.30, 8. Uh, that's plenty of sleep for me. And I think it generally meets the minimum requirements for my age group. Uh, but that's me. No need to go to 12, 1, 2. That's not me. I know many of my peers do, uh, but I don't find it very necessary. All right, let's take a minute with this question. Oh yeah, feel free to send answers to me if you want. Um, that's no problem. I'll take it. You can uh, choose your own answers. See if you can get it correct. All right, I think we'll start talking about this. So for question five, this is clearly a stoichiometry question. Uh, stoichiometry meaning that you're going to be converting units. So uh, here we have percent by mass. So that's mass over mass. Uh, make sure you keep uh, what kind of molecule you're talking about. So you're going to be mass H2O2 over mass solution. Here you have the density. You're going to do some calculations with that and find your answer. Uh, I'll show the answers in a little bit. Uh, for this one, you also have a percentage by mass calculation. This is honestly just weighted average for any of you guys who studied that in math. Uh, and we'll, I'll show the answer to that in a little bit. These are both calculations. So uh, this one is going to be a bit of memorization, a bit of reasoning, and I'll demonstrate that here. So for copper, oh, sorry, not copper, cobalt. Oh man, cobalt. Uh, usually I know that's either blue or pink. So I'm gonna put a hold on that. It might be A is what I'm saying. Uh, here we have acetate ion, that's usually clear. So that means in total, we're gonna have either pink or blue solution. I'm not so sure because I didn't memorize this specific molecule. That's fine. My reasoning tells me that cobalt usually is associated with blue or pink color. So I'm gonna consider this answer. Uh, copper, usually blue or green color. So that's not even an option. A uh, sulfate ion, colorless. So this is not an option. B cannot be the answer. Uh, iron, usually yellow, green, or gray and nitrate 
uh, colorless, so this is not an option. Zinc is white, fluoride, uh, zinc is either white or clear, I should say. And chloride is colorless, so that's not an option, it has to be A. That's an example of reasoning plus some knowledge last memorization combined into one question. Here are the answers for five, six, and seven. And in fact, uh, A is the correct answer. It was the only possible option if you really reason through it, uh, with some knowledge, of course. All right, five seconds. Uh, I'll wait five seconds to uh, wait for any questions. All right, let's keep on going. Here we have some more questions. These, of course, as you can tell from the numbers, are a little bit later on in the test. I think this is either local or national, one of the multiple choice sections anyway. Um, but there's that. All right, I got a question saying, is this the only class? I'm not sure whether I understand the question. So perhaps you can clarify. Uh, if we're talking about workshops, this will be the uh, only workshop on USNCO, but we have plenty of other workshops discussing other Olympiads, many of which you might be interested in. So I definitely suggest checking out our website, logisten.club. All right, I'm going to wait a minute to give people some silence before answering this next question I got in the chat. Sorry guys, I'm doing my best to not block the problem. Someone just let me know of that. It's blocked. I'm doing my best. I could put it down here for now. And I'll move it in a little bit so you can see the full question. This is on Zoom guys, I'm just, I'm sorry about that. But anyway, I think that's plenty of time to consider some of the question. Um. Uh, let's take a look at this first one. Bond distance for CO is this, while the bond distance for NO is this. CO is shorter than NO in this specific case. Uh, why is this? So we have carbon is one fewer valence electron, less than nitrogen negative, smaller atomic radius, uh, can form up to four bonds, while nitrogen can form only three. Uh, D makes no sense, B makes no sense. Um, C and A, I'd say, are uh, possible answers. I'm leaning toward A. I don't want to say anything yet in case I embarrass myself, but I'm just going to let you guys know. Either A or C, leaning toward A. Um, honestly, if I get this one question wrong, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Although, you know, of course, you want to get it right. Uh, but anyway, let's keep on going. Uh, stereoisomers in the square planar complex. So square planar complex refers to a certain molecule shape like this around the central uh, platinum atom. And uh, since the NH3 are the same, we're only going to have either an L shape or a cross. So I'm going to put B2. And which compound is an ester? Uh, you have to look for that distinctive ester. Sorry. You have to look for that distinctive ester shape, which is this one right here, where you have the double bond O with single bond to another O. So I'm going to go with A on that one. So indeed, I was probably correct with the A. Um, the first question. That's that's uh, reassuring to know. Anyway, that uh, there's those questions. All right, I think this is the final set. Just these two. Uh, this one is very long. The, both of these questions are uh, very long analysis questions, so uh, not really feasible during our time frame here. Um, but I just wanted to show these questions as demonstrations for what you might see. Uh, these are both, I think, local round questions. So this kind of level is available on the local round. Honestly, between the national and local multiple choice sections, very similar. Uh, national round is slightly more difficult. They lean more heavily into the organic chemistry sections, uh, which is generally considered more difficult and like later topics. Um, but you will find some pretty darn difficult questions on the 
uh, on the local round. There's one particular question I remember vividly. You needed highly advanced calculus to do it. About like 10% of students who took it that year got it right. Many probably by guessing. It was very difficult. Um, but anyway, looking at this question, you have to read the graph. Uh, on both axes, you have logs. So you'll be able to, you have to know your equilibrium equations uh, to be able to figure this one out. Uh, and what you're looking for eventually is the uh, formula of the metal sulfate. So basically you have to look at over here based on a certain uh, slope. What does that mean in terms of the equation? Uh, do some calculations, things like that. Uh, over here, this is also heavily into the calculation section. Notice that this is acid base. So um, this kind of falls into the category of equilibrium in terms of the ACS classification of topics. So uh, acids bases definitely here during the test. <clears throat> Sorry. And also uh, we have that one, two kind of classification again. So you have to be able to determine both one and two. It's like two questions in one, very exciting. Uh, so there's that. And you'll see that pretty often on both local and national tests. And here for the question two, you actually need to know your information on acid base indicators. So here that kind of demonstrates that in this one question, you do have many concepts integrated uh, with each other into a single question. It's a very interesting style that USNCO takes. Uh, anyways, those are those answers in case any chemistry wizard out there was able to solve that in time. Uh, but anyway, that basically ends my presentation today. Uh, thank you so much for attending uh, our uh, workshop today for USNCO. And once again, definitely check out our, our website for the next upcoming workshops. Uh, we have a series, six more, uh, covering a variety of uh, Olympiads uh, and a variety of topics that you might be interested in. So uh, give me one sec as I share my screen to show show off our Olympiad workshop series. Here's the form to register. Uh, our physics and our chemistry Olympiads are now basically finished and you will be able to find both on our YouTube channel. Uh, we have plenty of others going forward. Uh, this biology one I'm also going to be covering next week. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Uh, a lot of topics and um, anyone who's interested, definitely check it out. Um, so there's our uh, shameless self-promotion. And once again, thank you for attending. It was nice talking to all of you and it's my pleasure. If you have any other questions, feel free to stick around and ask, ask them to me now. Um, but otherwise, uh, have a great night.